and uh, some of the courses here have co-op, uh, which you should also consider if you are a non-thesis, if you're planning to apply for non-thesis. So uh, a co-op would be a good thing because like right now I'm in a course which has co-ops. So in order for me to graduate, I have to complete four months of internship where I have to get paid. If I don't do that, I'll have to do a seminar or a project, a small project to graduate. However, most of the other courses don't require you to do that, uh, like mechanical and uh, quality management, building engineering, civil engineering. I think computer science in Concordia has a co-op program, but I'm not so sure of. You can always go to the website and check. Uh, and what happens is you should have a minimum GP of three, which is uh, approximately a grade B. Nothing less than B, B minus is not acceptable. Uh, if And uh, one more thing that I'd like to tell you, if you graduate with a GP of less than two, less than three, then you basically don't get a master's certificate. You just get a diploma certificate from the university. So once you're here, you really have to be good. And that's why if your GPA is already lacking, if you're not so good enough and you come to universities like this, then there'll be no point even like the advisor may ask you to drop some of the courses because if you're not doing well, there's no point. You're actually wasting your money. Yes. So uh, the yeah, I was telling. So you need to get a GP of three, and then the university has its own body, uh, especially like in uh, at least I know that of Concordia. It's called CID. Um, so it helps you apply once you've completed sixteen credits. That is four courses. Uh, it helps you apply to companies, internships, and uh, it makes sure that you get an interview uh, and then it's up to you. It's always uh, how well you are, what kind of skills do you know. Uh, so it's kind of that. And most of the engineering programs in Canada are basically theoretical. There is no much practical unless or not you are in a thesis course. Um, so yes, that's pretty much it and about internships and job prospects. Yes, there are opportunities, but you have to grab them. So it's absolutely up to an individual. You can get a job if you're good enough. Uh, you actually have to earn that job, okay? There is nothing like it's there and you will get it. Like there's no campus placement. There's no mass recruitment here. Uh, internships, yes, there are internships. Even though you're not registered as a co-op student, you can uh, apply to companies via LinkedIn, via any other source, via recommendation from your peers. Uh, but yes, again, you will have to go through, through the process to get a job. And once you have it, they pay you, I think for a grad student, I think it's $20 an hour. So that's a, that's a good start. Uh, the tax in Quebec is around 15%. Uh, so you will approximately be paying half of the salary to the government as tax. But the healthcare for PR, once you are a PR, is uh, free. So you don't have to pay PR right now. You have to. Your health insurance is always covered, mostly covered in Canadian University in your fees. You, If you're joining in uh, from uh, winter, you probably have to pay for the uh, health insurance fee uh, commencing January and ending in August. And then because the yearly starts from August. So every fall, once you pay for your health insurance, I think it's thousand hundred dollars per year. So then it's then it you are like registered for a year from August from September to next August. So that's how it works. So if you're coming to Canada, you don't need to buy a health insurance separately. Um, that is one thing. Uh, then I think my advice would uh, to you would be just uh, if you're studying right now, just focus all your energy and do well in your undergrad. If you're working, work experience always helps with a good GPA and uh, you can get into good universities. And uh, uh, yeah, once you're here, just, just try and focus on your course because it's very important that you get good grade uh, but because the first thing that comes into a recruiter's hand is your CV and your CV says your GPA. 
if your GPA is less, there are like 100 applicants. And for each post, both the undergrads and the grads are applying. And uh, most of the undergrads are uh, people from Canada, people from all over the country, all over the world. But uh, usually grads are not the, they don't do masters that easily. They're really passionate about, if they're really passionate about it, yes, they will do it. Otherwise they don't. So what I find is most of the universities, you will just find uh, people, Asian people, you will find the Indians a lot in your grad course. And um, if you're applying for in the, for jobs, your GPA matters. So I would request you to spend some time on that and get your GPA as high as possible. It will help you in your future. The starting salary of an engineer in Canada is roughly fifty to sixty thousand dollars, and the taxes vary from province to province. The highest being Quebec. Uh, the PR takes a good time, but for all of for even PR to begin, you need to have a degree. You have to have a job, and then it takes a good year or two. So uh, right now, if you're coming, please don't think about PR. Just figure out what you have to do, what courses you have to take. Take courses that you like, that you love pursuing, that interests you. you don't take any courses that to, that you just for the sake of it that you're doing. So that will be really, that will actually can sometimes uh, depress you because the course will not be as you think you are. It's more of more mathematical uh, in grad courses are all about uh, teaching you how to uh, mathematically change a physical quantity or a physical situation into mathematical form and then solve it. So yes, uh, it's a good course. Canadian Canadian universities are really nice. Uh, the style of teaching, the way of assessing a student is really good. Uh, so yes, uh, I think if you're looking for Canadian universities are good compared comparing to the uh, tuition fees that is charged per student. Uh, so that is also less compared to US. Uh, in US, I think it's $60,000 for a year or something. In, uh, in Canada, the two year course costs around 28 to 38, 40 around that shouldn't be more than that. My course charges me $28,000. So yeah, it's a two year course. I can extend it up to three. I can take my time. That's always given to all the courses. Uh, so you can do that. And it's um, $28,000 in which if you convert to intern fees around 14, 15 lakhs. Okay, so the minimum uh, minimum pay here in Quebec is uh, raised to, when I came here, it was 11.25. Now it's, I think, $12. So after that, tax is deducted and you get around 11 or 10, I think $11. Yes, you get $11 an hour. You can just work 20 hours a week. Uh, so if you, you can do the calculations on your own, but yes, you cannot pay the entire lump sum. Like every, every the course, the two year course has a fees of $28,000, not a year fees. It's a two-year course, so the entire course fees is $28,000, which is taken in first four semesters. Uh, so every semester, it's around $6,000 to $7,000. And uh, uh, you you cannot basically earn $6,000 while doing a part-time. So yes, it's good to have family support, and uh, it will help you focus on your studies if you have a good family support. If you are just coming here to, you think that, uh, if you think, that part times can help you that much. No, it will just get your basic money. Monthly expense, you will basically be living from check to check. That means after the first salary comes one month and this, all that money would go because there are certain uh, expenses that have to be done. Like um, you have to take the metro and the bus and the pass, the opus is $51. So you can't escape that. Right. Uh, so because the temperature goes in winter to around minus 32 that I had seen. So you uh, technically can't uh, take your uh, bus. I mean, you technically can't take your cycle and bikes or something to go out.
so yes there are certain and the minimum rent also is around like a good three and a half which is uh, indian equivalent to one bhk would be costing you around 600 or like and if you're looking somewhere close to university yes the prices will be more than that it will be around 900 to thousand dollars for a one bhk which is here as three and a half a four and a half is equivalent to two bhk in indian uh, if you compare it that way so yes um, uh, if you stay a little bit further from the university prices can be as low as 500 to 600 dollars a month so uh, these two or two people are staying if you want to live very comfortably two of two of you can stay and uh, then you'll have to be paid then you'll be paying around 300 dollars so there is certain amount of expense that you cannot run away from and if you do part time it is all that you're taking care of you cannot expect more so i would request you to have some family uh, backup or a loan as such so that does not worry you in your course because financially if you if you're bankrupt or if you go less on cash then it can affect you as a person okay so i would recommend that you please take care of it. so there are uh, there are jobs ranging from uh, uh, call centers where you do like sales and stuff so you get extra commission for that um, I've seen people doing all sorts of stuff. There are uh, dish cleaning, there are restaurant waitress, waiters. But yes, if it, in order for you to work in a really good uh, restaurant here, you really have to know French because it's a French dominated province. So um, at least 70 to 75 percent of the population speaks French, out of which just 40 50 speak both English and French. Uh, so yes, most of them uh, just speak French, so you have to be well versed in order to do that. So generally the kind of work that you get is what is behind it. So maybe dish cleaning and people do it because they get uh, meals there for free. Uh, there are McDonald's, Tim Hortons, all those sorts of outlets. So you can do that. I've seen people uh, taking bicycles and doing food delivery. So uh, that's also an option they pay you, I think, fourteen dollars an hour. Uh, so yeah, that and then there are call centers, there are um, universities where you can apply. But in again, university jobs and on-campus job, you actually have to be preference is given to those who are in thesis and uh, who have uh, low financial uh, 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 support and things like that. But yes, it's not so easy because once a person is already working in on campus and when he is quitting he actually recommends his friends so that way here it's a little tough for you but yeah there are other opportunities like you can be a teaching assistant uh, you can be a marker you can be a lab tutor and uh, for that applications are always open online if you're already admitted to any of the university you can go to their website you can ask your program advisor about it and i'm sure there will be uh, forms which you can fill out and you have to submit in the university and then the, it goes under the screening and if you're good enough they might offer you a course to take like you basically will have to be taking tutoring classes for undergrads because you are a master student if you're doing phd you will be doing it for the grads and uh, all you need to do is uh, like i've seen people doing uh, integral calculus vector calculus um, so those sort of th things fluid mechanics gas dynamics uh yes so that is also available to you so that's it